Well, welcome to another episode of the Church Security Made a Simple podcast. I'm so glad that you are here. And today's topic is going to be around crime prevention through environmental design, commonly known as SIPTA. But before we get into today's teaching, I just want to talk to you about my new book that has just been released, 10 Powerful Strategies for Conflict De-Escalation. Really, in 2020, with the George Floyd murder here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, I realized that not everyone knows or understands how to deal with conflict. And I've got 10 powerful strategies um, from my life lessons, from my teaching, from my understanding of conflict escalation, which are going to really help you in your church, your nonprofit, or your day to day life. So I'd love for you to pick up a copy of my new book, 10 Powerful Strategies for Conflict Escalation. I shall drop the link below in the show notes. So let's talk a little bit about then the subject of SIP10 and actually at the Church Facilities Expo and Conference in Dallas uh, this past week, I spoke about the subject of um, SIP10 and a few weeks prior to this, I was doing some research for my presentation and I spoke with an architect who had little knowledge on the subject of SIP10 and for me, that was really concerning because SIP10 should be the basis of all building design. It should be the basis of all changes to the um, the layout of your building. It should also be the basis of simple things about how we're going to improve the safety and security of our church. Most often it can be done through building design. So I want to talk to you a little bit today about what is SIPTED and why is SIPTED so important in your building design. So let's start off with a little brief history and the concept. Now, like with anything when we're talking about history, it can be challenged. This is where my research um, took it to me. Maybe there's a SIP TED expert listening to us and saying, Simon, um, that's not how I understand it. But um, I, the research that I found said that in 1961, a journalist called Jane Jacobs wrote that we could use physical security environments to reduce crime. So we could use physical environments to reduce crime. And now one of the key principles of SEPTED is that it eliminates criminal opportunities at your property through building design. It's going to eliminate criminal opportunities at your property through your building design. And a good SEPTED can result in your property being less appealing for those motivated offenders. I'm going to give you an example. So when I first emigrated here to the U.S., now, I was head of counterterrorism at Mall of America, Minnesota. And the you know, building was built in the 90s. And one of the walkways that used to go over a highway was concrete. So it'd go from a parking lot over a public highway into the Mall of America. It was made with concrete. You couldn't see who was on the walkway. There was a lot of corridors. Um, there was a lot of robberies, a lot of crime, because what the criminals found was for them, it was an inviting environment because it was dark. Uh, there was a lot of concrete. You couldn't see the walkway from the road, even though it went over road. And you know, robberies and crime were just off the roof. Uh, so we looked at this problem through a different way. And I won't bore you about the details of going to the city, but with the city, we pulled the walkway down and we, we replaced it with a glass walkway. And here's what it did overnight. It allowed the walkway to be seen from the road. So any vehicle that was going underneath could look up and would see a glass walkway and you could see people inside. It meant those motivated offenders that were there to perhaps um, commit robberies, they could be seen. Most criminals, most criminals do not want to be seen. And then it removed a lot of those corners and dark areas where people could hide and it changed aesthetically the look and feel of the building. If I can, I want to release this podcast on video. I'll, I'll superimpose a picture so you can see how this building looked. Um, so by that building design, it really made it more secure. And perhaps the state, the state you're in is also very similar to here in Minnesota. But our federal courthouse has concrete bollards um, preventing a vehicle from being able to drive into um, the, the federal courthouse. However, these bollards are sort of shaped in like an almost like a boat shaped um, um, design and they're covered in sod. And in the summer, people will sit on these, they'll eat their lunch on them, they'll sunbathe on them. They just see them as something aesthetically pleasing. However, 
However, the reason why they are there is to prevent a vehicle, a large um, truck, being able to drive into the federal courthouse. So simply changing the design and the look, that measure enhanced security and no one would even know why why they, they are there. So I'll, like I said, I'll try and put a picture on of both these things so you can see them. And lastly, I worked with a Christian school where the front desk was tucked in the corner. The front desk couldn't see the doors and they couldn't see internally into the building. It was a really poor, poor layout. So just by a simple suggestion of tweaking and changing where that front desk was, it gave them the ability to see the front doors so they could lock those down quickly using technology. And they could also lock the internal doors and make themselves safe. They could take themselves to a place of safety all came from just changing the, the architectural design, the sort of layout of where that front desk sat. So some, some examples then. So I want to cover a little bit then. So, well, when should septed be, be covered, Simon? Well, when your building is just a dream and you're at the initial planning stages and when, you're, you, when you've identified an architect. So before you've even broken ground on a new church building, on a new renovation, on a new expansion, you should be thinking crime prevention through environmental design. You should be thinking SIPTED processes. And I'm just going to give you three strategies that are going to help you find the best design team. Because one of the things people struggle with or they might ask is, well, Simon, you've told us about what SIPTED is, but how do we find people then that understand these processes? Well, the first thing I would say, number one, is that when you are considering a building expansion and you engage a set of architects, they should ask you about your last security risk assessment. The reason being that architect needs to know and understand your current building vulnerabilities and what mitigation strategies have been requested by your consultant or whoever created your security risk assessment. So the first thing that you should always do is ensure that your architect has asked to see your last security risk assessment. If you have to go to them and say, hey, do you want our risk assessment before you start designing this building? That's my probably what we call a red flag. They should be proactive. If they know and understand SIPTED processes, they should come to you and say, so we can look at this building through the lens of SIPTED. Uh, we need to see your security risk assessment to identify the vulnerabilities that you have. So that was number one strategy is your architect, your design team should ask you about your last security risk assessment. The second one is interview prior clients of your architect or design team. Now, in the for-profit world, people wouldn't have any hesitation in doing this. In churches sometimes, for whatever reason, People don't like to ask those difficult questions, but you really want to go to one of their prior clients and say, hey, for you, how did you find the process? Do you, do you find that you have the space needed? Do you find that your entryways um, are not congested, that there's room for people to get in and out? Have you had any emergencies where the building's really been tested? You say, actually, that's not quite right. It looks nice, but that isn't quite right. So, my second strategy really is to do what a for-profit would do and interview prior clients and ask them about SIPTED. How have you found their design build against day-to-day -day operations? Now you've been in there for a year, 18 months, two years, what does it look like? Or have you had to go back to your build team and say, we need to change something because it doesn't work for a security mindset. So the second tip I would give you is interview prior clients of your design and build team. The third thing, um, that you can do to be successful around SIPTED is that actually I had this at the Church Facilities Expo in Dallas last week, is that someone approached me and said, Simon, I um, actually had him on his iPad, which is pretty cool. An executive pastor came to me and said, Simon, we're at the planning stages. We have architectural designs. Can you assess those designs against the SIPTED principles? So what are the SIPTED principles? And, and it's too detailed for this podcast but it's about natural surveillance. Remember the Mall of America, the, the concrete walkway, we pulled it down, replaced it with glass, removed burglaries overnight. 
natural access, vehicle, people flow. How are people going to get into your building? How are they going to leave your building? What is the vehicle flow in and out to make sure it's safe? Territorial reinforcement, the boundaries of your property, the boundaries of these rooms, what does that look like? And lastly, physical maintenance is how taken care of your um, of your building is. Because honestly, a badly kept, maintained building entices those motivated offenders in because they assume, well, if you don't look after your building, the garbage is everywhere, maybe they're an easy prey for safety and security and I can go and take advantage and commit some type of crime. So the third strategy is really once you have your plans, is to try and get them in the hands of someone who understands SIPTED so they can test them against natural surveillance, natural access, territorial reinforcement, physical maintenance. Actually, I worked with a nonprofit that had a $100 million renovation and security wasn't even considered. And they gave me the plans post and I was like, whoa, this is a mess. It, the, the place was an absolute mess and they just had a $100 million renovation. So the third strategy really works is invest your time and energy up front is show the plans to security experts. So those three strategies, I'll quickly go over them again. Your design build team should ask about your security risk assessment. A strategy for success is interview their prior clients. Don't be afraid find out do the SIPTE principles work and um, how did they implement them and then third state is show your building plans to a security expert so they can assess them against the four pillars of SEPTED. And then lastly well you could be saying well Simon uh, we don't plan on a building expansion we don't have plans to renovate we don't have plans to grow where we are right now uh, well you can still look at your building through the lens of SIPTED you can say is there anything you can change by design to make your building more secure? Is your children's ministry in the most secure area of the, your church? Could you just simply move that to somewhere different? So even if you aren't planning on a building expansion, you can still look at the building design to say, can we enhance where we are? And actually, I'll give an example of one of my church clients. They had 14, 15 entrances, really old church, 100 year old church. Um, you know, sort of um, places all over the place where people could hide. They never knew who was inside the building. Um, still an open door church, but they decided to close most of those entryways down and have one open during the day. And then they moved the front desk inside that door. So that front desk person could then greet everyone that walked in, could welcome them to the church, but they also had a better understanding of who was in their building. It's a great example of how you can use um, SIPTE, crime prevention for environmental design, just by working with what you already have, moving a front desk, closing other doors, every person had to walk past this front desk person, eliminated those instances where you don't know who is in your room and then thefts can occur because that person is seeing every person in the room and then they can use their human instinct or behavioral assessment training to know is this person here a threat or are they seeking God's grace. And so as we wrap out this teaching on SEPTED, I just want to remind you that SEPTED is a great tool to enhance your security at the building design stage, but also post, just looking as to uh, what do we have. Most often, those simple design changes work. Those simple design changes really work. So thank you for listening during this episode. I want to remind you that you can go and grab your free download of our seven-step guide based on my book securing church operations the link below will be to that and you have a blessed day and i shall see you in that next episode take care everybody